Howdy, it's Tubal Kane again, and this time to embark on a rather lengthy video of uh, 8 to 10 parts. I'm not sure just how, how many yet, but it's going to be on the building of uh, what I'm going to call the Yellow Boy Engine Series. And I'm actually going to build more than one or several different versions of the same one in this video, so that's what's going to uh, make it so long. And uh, what we got here is a... Uh, one of my little lead flywheels, but of course it's painted gold to simulate brass. And uh, the frame itself is going to be made out of brass, like this. That's 45 thousandths thick, unlike this piece that I'm setting on here. Now those are actually kick plates off of a door, back when they built buildings properly. So Now you can build this with aluminum, or steel, or just anything your little heart desires, but uh, I'm going to make mine brass because it's going to be called the Yellow Boy. I'm attempting to make this simple enough so some uh, first timers or even some boys can get started on uh, building something like this. So there's no castings involved except of course for the flywheels, but you can use a steel flywheel. That's kind of irrelevant. But let's take a look what I've got done here so far in some of my prototypes. I made two prototypes. And uh, this one, and I mounted them on a little walnut base to, to give them some uh, stability. But this is a wobbler. And it's a single acting wobbler. And uh, the cylinder is made out of actual uh, brass tubing, like all of this hobby tubing that I use. And I attempted to keep it simple so there wasn't any boring, but I'm not sure that is going to be as easy as what I thought it would be. So the second version of that is, uh, looked like this. And the cylinder is machined and made out of a, a rectangle of brass with a, an aluminum piston. And everything else here is pretty much uh, brass, except for the, uh, the shaft itself. And that could be brass if you had a notion to. And I've changed some of the dimensions here in the different versions. And uh, this particular one is bent. And uh, that isn't as easy to do as uh, you might think. So I will make a version where I'm bending it out of one piece, like this. And then another version where it's all soldered up out of uh, three different pieces. So you could also find tubing, rectangular tubing, and cut that uh, one side off of it and form your, your frame. Actually this is the frame rather than the base. And uh, in this particular one, I don't expect you to do this, and it wasn't as easy and as successful as I thought, but in order to make the bend and uh, have the bend occur just where you want it, I drilled a series of holes. Perhaps you can see from here a little better. There's a 20 or more 1 16th inch hole spaced about a quarter inch apart and I thought that it would be easier to bend and the bend would occur exactly on that line but it wasn't as, uh, as great as I thought. And uh, some of you will have trouble bending this and I'm going to use a little homemade brake on one of these to do the bending but of course you won't have that so uh, perhaps you can bend it in a vise or make it by the three piece method that I'm going to show you. I'd also like to make a version that is uh, a two-cylinder, so that the flywheel would be in the middle, and then uh, there would be another uh, cylinder out here. So if time allows, I might do that as well. And showing you all these different steps and how to do it is what's going to take so very, very much time. I've worked up a series of uh, patterns, made, just made out of cardboard. And I'll show you those again in a second here, but in the other one that I'm going to make where it will be soldered together, we'll start with a bottom piece like this, and I've already uh, cut these out, and there'll be two sides, and it'll be soldered up like this. And the frame, of course, will be cut out, like what we got here, but th that's the essence of the soldered model. Now let's talk just a little bit about brass. If you haven't worked much with brass, it's really quite different from uh, steel. And some of its characteristics make it uh, difficult to do, although it's a soft metal. But what you're going to find is that when you drill a hole, especially with a brand new sharp bit, if you do not have the work secured in a vise or held down in some way, it often wants to screw its way up into the drill, and it'll grab it out of your hands, pull it up, and it's going to spin this around and cut the heck out of you. So you really got to be careful when you work with this brass that uh, something like that doesn't happen. So make sure that you secure the work when you do your drilling. Now it may not happen, but then again it may happen and you can't be safe enough, especially you, you young boys that 
may be watching this and I hope there are some that are watching it. And another thing that you're going to notice about brass, if you haven't already noticed it, is that when you saw it, if you've got a saw blade that's been used even once on steel, and still seems incredibly sharp on steel, and you start using it on brass, you're going to find that all of a sudden it does not seem very sharp. And you're going to notice that even more with drill bits, where you sometimes get a drill bit that just absolutely will not drill at all. But yet, it worked so fine on steel 30 seconds ago. So if at all possible, in some cases, it would be great if you could have dedicated tools. That is, saw blades that you use only on brass. Drill bits, maybe get out your brand new drill bits and, and use them. And then when you put them back in your case, I'm assuming, of course, you have thousands of bits, I guess, like I do. But uh, if, you, if you use the, the new ones, they aren't going to dull on the brass, but they sure will work well compared to the other. But the most uh, uh, obvious thing that you're going to notice is with files. So a file that is uh, used or semi-sharp uh, is just doesn't dig in. But if you get a brand new file and you file your, uh, your brass, or you take an old file and you file up here where it basically has been unused, you're going to notice a remarkable difference between the two. So those are just some suggestions uh, to, to carry out when you work with brass. And uh, it isn't even quite so obvious on, on copper, but it sure is with brass. And uh, It is a lovely material, but it will quick, quickly tarnish. And it solders most well, as does copper. So much easier and uh, reliable than working with uh, with steel when you when you solder so those are some of the the things you need to think about when you use brass now where are you going to get brass well if you have to buy it from a supplier it's going to be expensive that's all this to it so if you can find some at your local scrap yard recycler junkyard or whatever or maybe you got some around the house it, uh, it sure would be great and this material is 45 thousandths thick I don't know what gauge that is because the gauge in brass, of course, is different than the uh, steel gauges. It's a, a different system. Now, if I'm talking too much and explaining too much, then you're watching the wrong video because uh, this is going to be a video that includes a lot of belabored detail. But for a beginner, these are the details that you need to be successful. Now, do not get discouraged if you spoil a part. Perhaps do some rehearsals and practice in, in uh, scrap material, especially with your soldering and some of the other operations where you might spoil something. So, uh, And if you're not going to ever build one of these, maybe you just enjoy this vicariously. As usual, I don't work from drawings, but I do have some patterns or templates that I made. And uh, hopefully, near the end of this video, I will have uh, totally making drawings for me, so working drawings for those of you that are interested in that type of thing. And getting back to this, this could also be made with a, a spool valve, but these are going to be wobblers or oscillating engines. But these patterns that I made, and you can use, uh, well, this is really an old post office mailer it's just the right thickness uh, cereal box donut box you know something of that nature just just nights for this but I did a series of them here's number one and I put a number on it. that's number one there's number two and uh, three this is pretty much the one that I use for for this you won't see any dimensions on it and uh, here's number four and that was basically this one, only I changed this dimension right here. So you might want to do that. Make up some patterns. But I will tell you some of these dimensions as we go along, but it does not constitute a working drawing, and that is four inches long. So we got a four inch long uh, engine, and we got a flywheel that is uh, two and a half, but of course you can change that. That isn't very critical at all. You, you can use almost any size flywheel, but if it looks in proportion, I think it's always better. And in this particular model, the flywheel is recessed just a little bit into the base, and that's, that's something I like to do uh, myself. And uh, you're going to see different versions of how I did the, uh, the manifold here. Remember, this is a double acting, and this was a single acting. 
For the first engine, this is the one I'm going to make. Almost exactly the same as this, but I might change the length of the cylinder just a little bit, but, but that's it. The yellow boy. And that is from this pattern. Now this brass is true on this edge, but this is saw cut, so that is not a square edge. So I'm working for now just from, from this true edge. And I already laid it out. I set this for four inches. Made two marks here. One, two. Uh, connected them. Now if you need to put a layout die in here and go ahead and do that. And that's been connected. And next, uh, I don't want to start right on this edge because that's just a jagged sawed edge. It's, it's not true at all. And uh, so I'm going to uh, work this such that I work around this hole. Uh, you may not have that a pro as a problem in your brass, but that was a hole that held this to the wooden door, the oak door. Not the pine door, but you, boy, they really built those school buildings. So I'm instead of doing it this way, where the hole is going to end up in here, I'm, I'm flipping it around like this. And I want to leave a little extra material. I, I'm a big one on leaving extra material and then taking it off later on. So to start with, Use a marker or two, they really work nice. I'm going to lay uh, a line out with my square approximately on that black mark there. I hope you're following some of this. Just take my scriber. And this is a fold line, this is not a cut line. I'll be folding on that line. This is an inch and a quarter right here inch and a quarter. And sometimes when I was making my uh, my templates, I just used this inch and a quarter Lufkin ruler, you know, and I drew on each side of it, but sometimes your ruler slips on you. And you can even see where I slipped up here off camera. That's why you see double track there. But it'll work just fine to take a, a ruler and uh, make it inch and a quarter right here. And I'm wearing my Optivisor. You know, I'm 70 years old. Got to get, get the light so I can see it. As well lit as my shop is. Sometimes there's dark spots. And then I'm marking that. And that's the other fold line. And I'm, those don't even show up too well on camera. But there, there's a line there and there. Let's see if that'll show up. Yeah, there you go. Now I'm going to pre-lay out some of the other lines that are laborious here, some center lines and some, uh, some lines uh, that uh, I'm going to drill holes for the main shaft, and a couple of uh, location points for swinging the arcs. I'll do that off camera. Looking at the pattern now, this hole here is a uh, is going to be drilled and, and so is this. That's for the main bearing. But there's a couple other uh, center punch marks here and those are just to swing the arc. Now this is inch and a half wide on both sides and uh, the, again the hole is one and one eighth inch up from the fold. So I laid out uh, this center line here, that's three quarters of an inch in, three quarters of an inch in, and on that center line will be the main bearing and uh, the pivot point for the uh, dividers, and the dividers is already set here, and I've center punched that. Again, that was, what did I say, uh, three quarters up, just like that, and I'll scribe a semicircle. That divider is not all that sharp. Like that. And same thing over here. Now I'm done with those holes. 
and I'll take some thinner and remove those because I'm not going to drill those holes. This is the hole that I'm going to drill for the main bearing. Again, one and one eighth up. Now I didn't bother to lay it out here because that will be drilled separately and you'll see why later on. But upon folding that, often the two lines or two holes will not coincide and you're going to have a crooked main bearing. So I'll drill one while it's flat and the other one after it's been bent up. Okay, on to some of the other uh, layout now. Sometimes I don't know if I'm giving too much detail or not enough, but I'm just working on this one side right now, which is actually this side right here, and that's kind of bright on the camera. But I've changed this dimension here to be uh, 5 eighths, the same as this side. It's going to be 5 eighths from the fold line. So I laid that out, that's this line here, with the square. You can see it better when there's some shade. I'm talking about this line now. Now I want to lay out a radius right in this corner here because I like, uh, if you can look right here, I like the appearance of a radius here better than a square corner. Just It just looks a lot better. So. In order to lay out that radius, I have located this point, and that's a quarter inch up and quarter inch over, and I've center punched it, and set the dividers for quarter inch, one fourth inch, 0.250. Now you don't need a complete circle here, but what I'm going to do there in a little while is drill a half inch hole here, and I'll show you that. That will give me the radius, because you, you can't really saw that very well. And then over here, you know, I almost ran into this hole, so I might have to sand a little bit more off that or th than uh, what I wanted to, but I will lay off uh, this radius. Well, how do I get it in the camera right range here? I'm going to lay this radius off too. And that can be done several ways. It can be done with the dividers. It can be done with a radius gauge, and this is a quarter inch radius, which get, which gives you a half inch diameter. But a uh, radius gauge like this is, you know, you got a quarter inch radius here and here and here and here and and on the inside. So you can use that any way you want. If you don't have one, you can use your drill gauge. You can use your uh, circle template from drafting. There's all different ways of doing that, but I do understand that not everybody has all this stuff. I got about every tool known to mankind here, so uh, and I use them to their fullest extent, but I'm showing you some other ways to do that too. So I'll go ahead and lay this off, and I believe I'll use this just for variety off camera right here, and then I'm going to start working over on this other side here right over here, which will be just a little bit different. I do realize that some of my lines are showing up better than others, but what I've done over on this side, again, this is 5 eighths up. Let me double check here. Yeah, that's 5 eighths. This line here, which is this, is a total of one and a half, maybe just a little bit over. And this is a one and one quarter. I made it a little longer because I'm going to make the cylinder a little longer. So it actually is one and three eighths. These uh, holes have been laid out and uh, they're quarter inch radius because they're going to be half inch holes. So that completes the layout. I did uh, round this corner off, put that little radius in. So what I'm going to do now, I am ready to cut it out so I have a smaller piece to work with because I'm still on a pretty good sized sheet here which is rather inconvenient to work on. So I'm going over to the bandsaw and I'm going to cut this out, always staying a little away from my, uh, my lines because I'm going to belt sand it down to the line. Now you might have to file it to the line but I'm working with a, a dull bandsaw blade 
at least it's dull on brass so I'm struggling a little bit with that I don't have any other blades so uh, that that completes the layout so that it does look like this only mirror image like th like this so I'll bring it back after it's cut out here and show you what it looks like it's now cut out to a reasonable easy to handle piece and that did cut pretty well now I'm going to take it to the belt sander and I'm going to uh, sand it down to this layout line here on the top you can still see the layout line this is where I started I'm not going to make any of the other cuts yet now when you uh, sand this you're going to find that since this is a copper alloy probably 90 percent copper that it really really transmits the, the heat conducts the heat I guess is the word and uh, you know you can burn your fingers almost within uh, moments it, it happens so quickly so you got to keep your work cool when you sand it you can see now that I could have started with a piece of uh, brass it's four inches by approximately uh, four and a half now every operation you perform with copper and brass is going to leave a rather horrendous burr so my sanding burr there is considerable and you can use your yoga I almost said yoga. You can use your yoga, noga deburring tool, or a file, or take it back to the sander and sand that a little bit, but a file works quite well also. Then I'm going to, uh, before I do any folding or any more cutting out, I am going to drill three holes. One, two, three. And those are going to be half inch holes. They're already center punched, as shown earlier. I think I showed most of that. Maybe not all of it. I always start with a pilot bit. Since those are already center punched, I'm going to first use my little precision uh, drill here. Drill them. This is only 16th of an inch. I'll drill them 16th of an inch. Then I'll take it over and I'm going to drill them uh, one fourth on the other drill press and I'm going to show you how I get to the final size with this without risking my fingers. Now make absolutely sure that you uh, clamp your work when you do this drilling at least these initial holes you do not need to clamp it down necessarily w with the, this bit which I'll talk about in just a second but these are now 3 16ths in diameter and I'm drilling them half inch because that will uh, produce the radius be, and this needs to be done, of course, before you do the cutting out here. I changed my mind. I am not going to drill the main bearing hole now on either side. It's going to be done later after folding, and that uh, the reason for that will become self-evident later on. So we'll hold that for later. And uh, let's talk a little bit about this Christmas tree bit. Now, I call this step bit or unibit. A Christmas tree bit and the beauty of these if you have never used one is they do not tend to grab it's almost more like a milling with a plunge mill and I have marked with a marker the half inch diameter one so I'm going to go in just from one step to another until I get to the one that's got uh, the black mark on it and that is half inch and they are marked as such on the inside if at all possible, do not drill this just with a regular half inch twist drill. And if you've ever done a sheet metal, and especially brass, with, uh, with larger bits, you're going to find that it, it wants to grab as you go through, and it will helix its way up, or screw its way up the helix. Grab it out of your hand and spin it. And it sometimes tear the work or bend it and just and cut you just all kinds of things that can happen that is the beauty of this and I'm going to show you uh, or let you watch as I drill at least one of those now it will also produce a horrendous burr on the back side so after I get to the final side I'll flip it over and then ever so lightly come in from this side and that will take that burr off 